Hi, it's Rod, and this one's called Rod's Revelations by the River. So, we need to understand that this world is supposed to be an evil and suffering world. God wanted to give us free will choice back at Adam, and we're exercising it today. Most people are choosing to be evil instead of good, causing great tribulation in the earth today. Jesus said that in the world we'll have great tribulation, but that we could be joyful trusting in him through it, to help us through it, because he's overcome it. Jesus said the end times tribulation will be something like the days of Noah, frightening judgments on wicked people, wars, famines, earthquakes, false teachers, Christian persecution, increasing wickedness, decreasing love, the love of many growing cold, apostasy. John said that this world is under the control of Satan. There's a few children of God and the rest are Satan's children. Growing into a more anti-Christ world. So it's like God's trying to put us through tribulation training now, the bride, the remnant church, so that we'll be able to handle greater tribulations coming on the wicked later. It's sort of like first judgment comes into our lives to try to deal with sin in our life so we can get a better relationship with God going because the best way to prepare for the tribulation coming is through trying to get a good relationship with God going now because he's got to help us through it. So he's got to put us through difficult suffering things. It says in the Bible that Jesus learned obedience through the things he suffered. We're supposed to follow the example of Jesus and learn to obey God through suffering too. It's like uh, there's a scripture that says, Before I was afflicted with suffering, I went astray, but now I stay closer to you and obey your commandments. It's like Jesus is like a good shepherd, and if we stray away from him, then it's like we wander off into a wolf's den or something and get eat, eaten by Satan and his demons. But if we want to stay close to the good shepherd, he can keep us safe from the enemies around us and provide everything we need. Maybe help us to go by a peaceful river to relax or something. Uh, he leads me beside the still river or something. And that's where we got to get our joy from, being in the presence of Jesus. That uh, we got to get our love, joy, and peace from God, not from the things of the world have an overflow we can share with other people, not be trying to get love, joy, and peace out of this world. It'll never help us to find that. We learn obedience to God through the things we suffer. Jesus is our example to follow. It's like the punishment for sin in the Bible, stuff like slavery, slaughter, like the days of Jeremiah, days of Noah, God punishing the wicked at the right time, trying to help the righteous out in the midst of it. A lot of times we got to try to act like a happy Noah or a happy Jeremiah or a happy Jesus or a happy Paul in a very evil and suffering world. Joseph could be in prison and slavery, but yet God could be helping him through it. Paul could be in prison and God can be helping him through it. And remember, Paul wasn't alone in the prison. Jesus was with him. And wherever Jesus is, you could be happy. Your good shepherd, Jesus, is with you, living inside of you. we got to believe that uh, God is with us in the lion's den, fiery furnace. He was with Noah in the judgment on the wicked, on the ark. He can be with us through slavery or imprisonment, through our death. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, Jesus can help me through it. Jesus controls everything. It's like the story of uh, Jesus in the boat during the storm. Jesus just says, they stop storm and it stops. 
Jesus just has to say, stop World War III, and it stops. But if he lets it continue, he can control it, and he can help you through it. It's like a vision I had where I was talking to Jesus on a park bench, and I asked him the question, what does the future look like, Jesus? And he said, famine, apostasy, rioting, World War III, economic collapse. And I thought, well, that doesn't sound like too good of a future, Jesus. And then it went into a vision of me dancing with Jesus around World War III. There was like tanks, bombs going off, people getting shot and everything. And I'm dancing with Jesus, and I'm thinking, why am I doing this? And I turned to Jesus, and he says, don't let it bother you. I control it. And so God's been trying to teach me that we can still praise him with the dance, even through World War III. He controls it. So it doesn't matter what's on the news or the internet or how bad the world's getting. It's like Jesus is trying to say to us, don't let it bother you. I control this. I'll help you through it. It's almost like we have to think of ourselves like superheroes or something. With Jesus living inside of us, it's sort of like uh, Superman Jesus inside of us. That it doesn't matter how bad the world, tribulation, chaos gets or whatever. Jesus is there to help us through it. There's nothing too difficult for him to do. I was listening to a woman talk about a vision she had the other day. She said something like, she saw this old TV set with all kinds of economic collapse on it or something, and she turned to Jesus and she said to him, What do I do, Jesus? What do I do, Jesus? What do I do, Jesus? Everything's collapsing in the world today. There's so much tribulation going on. And Jesus said to her, Don't try to do anything yourself. Don't try to do anything yourself. God's trying to teach us not to trust in us, but to trust in Him. And this is what he's trying to do with our lives today. I've had visions where I've looked at the TV screen or the internet screen and seen all kinds of chaos and trouble on it. And Jesus standing next to the TV screen saying, Don't let it bother you, Rod. I control it. So it's like that woman's vision. We're not supposed to be all afraid of how we're going to handle this great tribulation coming for us. We're supposed to put our eyes on God, put our mind on God, and have perfect peace trusting in Him, not trusting in us. So God's got to try to train us to stop trusting in ourselves and learn to try to trust in Him more. In my life, He's trying to teach me how to prepare for the tribulation by learning more of His truth, trying to put my faith in His truth, how to have a good relationship with Him. It's like if we were in a vision like that, what do you want me to do, Jesus? The econ economy's collapsing. World War III's starting up. And he will say, just do what I tell you to do with my power to do it. Just do what I tell you to do with my power to do it. So that's what I try to do. I try to listen to God. Ask him what's best to do. You want to go down the river for some revelation today? Let's do it. And do it with his power to do it. Let Superman Jesus in you do it through you. It's like I try to ask God what to do. Sometimes it seems very difficult, especially if you've got a lot of pain and suffering in your life, like my back pain. But if he's telling me to do it, even if you're tired, even if you got pain, a supernatural strength can come upon you. Like Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That we're supposed to pray and obey and resist the devil trying to stop us from obeying God. And then if we fall into temptation, repent and get back to praying and obeying again. What do you want to do now, Jesus? Jesus living in me wants to do God's will out through me if I allow him to. It may be Bible study. It may be trying to create a truth teaching like this. It might be prayer for others. There's a lot of things that Christians can be doing. Taking communion, giving thanks to God, worshiping him that uh, we got to live in sort of like an upside-down world, like a satanic, antichrist opposite world where people want to believe in lies instead of truth and do evil instead of good. 
creates a lot of tribulation and chaos. But like Jesus said, I've overcome all this. God's technology is a billion times more powerful than Satan's technology. It doesn't matter what he's trying to use on us to brainwash us or poison us. We can handle it with Jesus' help too. We can be in a fiery furnace and not get burned. We could uh, die and he can raise us from the dead. He can feed us in the wilderness for 40 years. We don't need the mark of the beast. We need God to take good care of us. Not the government to take good care of us, or us to take good care of us, God to take good care of us. Then we can have some peace, and then we can have some joy. And then we can be ready for the judgment on the wicked coming. And we've got to be ready for our judgment day, which could be any day. <laughs> Dropping dead and coming to a judgment day where God's going to judge the Christians' works to see if they get any rewards or great careers in heaven or not. And we got to be thinking about that. If we're sinning all the time, we're not obeying God and getting these rewards and great careers in heaven later. we got to understand how sin can harm us for our good works judgment day as a Christian. And if we start doing a whole lot of sin, we could lose our salvation. It's not once saved, always saved. It's if you continue to have faith in God, you'll continue to uh, be saved. And it's a free gift salvation. But when we do, when we let, we obey God, he, it's like these obedient to God points on Judgment Day, you pile them up for great rewards or great careers that you're going to miss out on if you don't want to obey God here on earth now. Thinking that, oh, well, you just get saved through the cross, it doesn't matter if you obey God or not. Yes, it doesn't matter if you obey God. You miss out on the rewards of great careers if you don't obey God. A lot of disobedient to God Christians out there that aren't going to have a very good good works judgment day. But if you want to be an obedient to God Christian, you can get great rewards and great careers. So if you try to act like Jesus, our example to follow, he got great rewards and a great career when he died. We can get a great career and, and great rewards when we die. If we want to try to let Jesus live through us, become conformed more to the image of Jesus. And then try to be more like an Apostle John than an Elton John. And then come to a judgment day after you die and get greatly rewarded for it. Elton John, if he's not obeying God, isn't going to get any Academy Awards or Music Awards in hell or something. But if you try to act like Jesus, you can get great rewards like an Academy Awards day in uh, heaven where it's like you get rewarded for who loved God the most through suffering gets the greatest rewards or something. So, it, And we don't have to go through this suffering ourselves. Martyrdom, whatever God's putting us through, Jesus goes with us through it. It wasn't just Paul in the prison by himself, it was Paul and Jesus in the prison. It wasn't just Moses at the Red Sea by himself, it was Moses and God at the Red Sea. It's not us going through all this tribulation by ourselves, it's us and God going through the tribulations. So we got to think of heaven like uh, oh, going to the Father's house, like a prodigal son going through this world. Finally, you get to go to the Father's house. And it's like one great big party forever with love, joy, and peace in heaven. Like a prodigal son's story. And that's what we're looking for. It's like God's trying to find some children or bride for his son Jesus in this earth who want to choose to get saved by him, start obeying him, become conformed more to his image, like the image of Jesus Christ. And like Jesus says, only a few people are choosing to do that, so there's going to be like a few of these children or a few of the bride of Christ or something in heaven forever, and the rest are going to hell. And that makes it a very evil and suffering world, but that's the way God wants it. And we just got to try to choose to say, I want to be one of the children of God. I want to be one of the brides of Christ. Be more like an Apostle John than an Elton John. So I can go to heaven forever and party with my perfect father God, like the prodigal son with his father forever, in a place where there's perfect joy and peace forever. So we can't just look at the tribulation, the evil and suffering world that we're living in now, and get bothered by it all the time. How we can't handle it ourselves. We got to say, God can help me to handle this. Jesus, Superman in me can help me to handle it. It's like we're superheroes in the end times or something. 
it's like this vision I had about being on a beach and there was a great big storm going on and there was like women crying and babies drowning in the water and lightning and tornadoes and people starving around fire barrels. And I looked at Jesus and he said to me, now it's time to preach and do miracles. So it's sort of like when the world gets the worst or something in the future, which it's on a downward slide now into it, then God will give us more miraculous power to handle it all. So he's trying to train us to trust in him, not us now. With me, he tries to tell me to learn truth, put your faith in it, like, Meditate on scripture, meditate on truth meditations, meditate, create truth teachings and meditate on them. Just keep trying to understand the truth about this evil and suffering world, how to best handle it with God's hand, holding God's hand. Like the Psalms say stuff like, uh, I'm a very present help in your times of trouble, or it says in the Old Testament that uh, Fear not, I'll hold your hand, I'll help you through it. But, uh, God wants us to have this perfect father-child relationship, this good shepherd and sheep relationship, taking good care of us here on this evil and suffering world. And if we would believe in it, we could have peace and joy in his presence. Like Paul says, all I need is God's some food and clothing of God and I can be content, even in a prison or something. So that's a bit about uh, how to seek God's help in these tribulation times today and prepare for the tribulation to come with a hope that God can help us through it, with a hope that it, after we die and in heaven it will be worth it and we'll be greatly rewarded for our suffering experiences. So I'll try to show you a little bit of the river here before the sun goes in the end.